So in this lesson we're going to take a look at JavaScript classes. And in a very simple term, a class in JavaScript is kind of like a blueprint for an object. In that we can model a real thing and specify the properties that it has and the functions that it can perform. So there's quite a lot to know about JavaScript classes and how the prototypal object inheritance mechanism works. And we could probably put a whole course together on the intricacies of how that works. But as this course is focused on the essentials of JavaScript, we're just going to have a high level overview of what classes are and how you might use them within your JavaScript code. So let's start off by defining a simple class. And what we've defined is kind of like a souped up function in that we've defined some code, but it won't actually do anything until we run it. But whereas with a function, we call it by referencing its name, with a class, we actually create a new object in a process called instantiation by using the new keyword. So let me explain the code that we have here a little bit. We've basically defined a class called person and set up a variable inside it called name. And after that, we've created a new variable p and we've assigned it a new object based on the class of person. And if we were to inspect that p variable now, you'll see it looks very much like an object in that we've got a property of name and it's got a value assigned to it. And we can check that p is actually an object by using the type of operator. And as you can see, it is actually an object. But you'll notice outside of the object curly braces, we have the type of class that we've used to create our object. And in this case, it's person. And there is another operator that you can use to check what type of object you have created. And that is the instance of operator. So here you can see by writing a statement that p is an instance of person, we get a true value back. So what about if we want to access the value of the variable that's inside of our person class? Well, we don't actually reference the person class directly. We reference the created object or the instance of person which is stored in our p variable. And as with other objects, we can just use the dot notation to access the property that's created in the object. So one really useful thing with a class is we can define functions inside it that we can then call in the objects that we create. So here I've created a function called say hi, which should just log the name variable out to the console. And notice within our class, we didn't need to use the function keyword anywhere. And that's a nice feature that was introduced in ES6, which just makes our class definitions a little tidier. So if we want to call the say hi function on the person object that we've created, you can see I can call it just by referencing say hi on the p variable, which contains the object that we've created. But you'll notice in the output on the right hand side that the name variable is actually missing from the console log. And that highlights a really important part of using classes in JavaScript. And that is that we need to use the this keyword to reference functions and variables that are associated with a particular class. So you can see when I change the console log to this.name, the name actually does get displayed in the say hi function. And that's required when you're referencing variables and other functions that are associated with this person class, as it helps JavaScript to keep track of which variable it should be using in which position. So this is one of the things that can make classes in JavaScript really complicated. But as I said, we're going to keep it simple for this lesson. So as long as you understand that you need to use the this keyword to reference any variables or functions that you define within the person class, then you should be okay writing basic classes in JavaScript. So there's one more thing we can do to improve our person class, and that's to remove the fixed value that we've got stored in the name variable so that we can say hi to different people. So we could, of course, in our function here, put in an argument so that we can actually change the output of the console.log. That would kind of make the name variable above a bit redundant. And when you create your classes, you want to be able to associate certain properties to the objects that you create. So a better approach to solving this problem would be to use a constructor. So a constructor is just a special function that gets called when the object is created. So at this line down here, when we actually create a new person, this constructor function will run. So we can pass in values to the constructor. So the constructor will now accept one value and store that into the variable name. And if we assign the value that's passed in to this dot name, this will set the name variable in the overall person class to whatever's provided in the constructor call. So currently we're not providing any value, so let's put something in there now. 
So now you can see when we're creating our new person object, we're passing in a value which is then picked up by the constructor and inside the constructor function, we're saving that value in this dot name on that particular instance of the person object. So as you can see, when the say hi function is called on the person object, we get the new name in the console.log. So using classes has a lot of similarities with functions, but instead of creating blocks of code that can be run by calling your function, you're actually creating new objects that can have many properties and functions themselves that you can then use in other parts of your code. So as mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial, this is a very high level and simple overview of classes, but this should give you the basics for starting to write JavaScript classes.